One of the most important things to talk about in a democracy are civil liberties and civil rights. This movie is going to be so important and dense, but the questions I'd like you to focus on is what is the difference between civil liberties and civil rights? How does the Constitution protect the rights of individuals against the government? What is freedom of expression and due process? And how has the interpretation of the guarantee of equal rights changed over time? A quote I hear being tossed around quite frequently when it comes to civil liberties is Ben Franklin's quote, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Now, I want to know, do you agree or disagree with Ben Franklin? And keep this quote in mind as we watch this video. You have the right to remain silent. You also have the right to a fair court trial. You have the right to vote and the right to privacy. Americans are very familiar with these rights, but are they considered civil rights or civil liberties? Civil rights and civil liberties are terms that are often used synonymously, interchangeably, but the terms are actually very distinct. This video is going to explore the differences between civil rights and civil liberties, with specific laws corresponding to each term. Civil rights concern the basic rights to be free from unequal treatment based on certain protected characteristics, such as race, gender, disability, in settings such as employment, education, and housing, also access to public facilities. A civil rights violation occurs in designated situations where an individual is discriminated against on the basis of a protected characteristic. Most civil rights laws are established through the federal government via federal legislation or a case law. Civil liberties concern basic rights and freedoms that are guaranteed, either explicitly identified in the Bill of Rights and the Constitution or interpreted or inferred through the years by legislatures or the courts. Civil liberties include the right to free speech, the right to privacy, the right to remain silent in a police interrogation, the right to be free from unreasonable searches of your home, the right to a fair court trial, the right to marry, and the right to vote. The law differentiates between civil rights, which means the basic right of freedom from discrimination based on certain personal characteristics such as gender, race, or disability, and civil liberties, which are just basic freedoms. Civil liberties concern the actual basic freedoms. Civil rights concern the treatment of an individual regarding certain rights. Unlike civil liberties, where the government grants broad-based rights to individuals, civil rights are not only granted by the government, but also contain a protective aspect of those rights based on certain characteristics. One way to consider the difference between civil rights and civil liberties is to look at 1. What right is affected and 2. Whose right is affected. For example, as an employee, you do not have the legal right to a promotion, mainly because getting a promotion is not a guaranteed civil liberty. However, as a female employee, you do have the legal right to be free from discrimination and being considered for that promotion. Here's another example. The right to marry is a civil liberty, while gay marriage is a civil rights matter. If a couple, either same sex or opposite sex, is denied a marriage license because the court clerk has decided not to issue them at all, then their civil liberties have been violated. But if the clerk denied marriage license licenses only to LGBT couples, it's a civil rights violation. Now, in the United States, civil liberties are inalienable protections that citizens have against government overreach. This means that people have the right to engage in certain actions without government interference and that this right cannot be taken away. For example, individuals have the right to practice their religion without government intrusion. In the U.S., constitutionally guaranteed civil liberties are found in the Bill of Rights, the first ten amendments to the Constitution. 
Civil liberties protected by the Constitution include freedom of speech, religion, press, assembly, and petition, as well as the due process of the law. However, while civil liberties are protected by the Constitution, they can come into conflict with government or societal objectives, such as national security. If the U.S. government enacts a policy that the public does not approve of, citizens can use the freedom of speech, assembly, and petition rights to protest the government. These rights give citizens the opportunity to protest government actions without, at least in theory, facing interference from the government. Additionally, the press has the freedom to print stories, criticizing the government, or exposing government actions without facing punishment. However, the government may try to prevent a newspaper from publishing a story that contains damaging or classified information, the legality of which has been typically determined by the U.S. Supreme Court. Because citizens and the government regularly test the limits of the Bill of Rights, the Supreme Court plays an important role in determining how far protections for civil liberties extend. It falls to the Supreme Court to interpret the Bill of Rights, as well as to decide if the government has violated an individual's civil liberties. For example, in the 1989 Supreme Court case Texas v. Johnson, the court determined that making a political statement by burning a flag is constitutionally protected symbolic speech. Additionally, the court helps to determine the degree to which civil liberties can be restricted and the types of speech that have not been protected by the Constitution. Another important aspect of civil liberties is due process. Due process ensures that the government adheres to a fair legal process. For example, when someone is accused of a crime, due process ensures that he or she will have an opportunity to go through the criminal justice system and that the individual's legal rights will be protected. Amendments of the Bill of Rights include such due process protections as the right to a lawyer, the right to a jury trial, and prohibition against cruel and unusual punishment, among other protections. There are two types of due process, substantive and procedural. Substantive due process is meant to ensure that the government does not unfairly or arbitrarily violate an individual's life, liberty, or property. This means that substantive due process prevents the government from enacting or engaging in policies that would derive an individual of his or her civil liberties unless it can be demonstrated that the policies are necessary. Procedural due process, in contrast, refers to the specific process the government must go through in order to legally deprive an individual of life, liberty, or property. This means that if someone is accused of committing a crime, the government must go through the criminal justice system in order to legally take any of his or her rights away. In countries that have strong protections for civil liberties, such as the United States, it can be difficult at times to balance individual liberty and social order. This is because unchecked civil liberties can at times violate laws or threaten the safety and well-being of others. As a result, the Supreme Court has imposed limits on certain civil liberties to ensure that the rights of everyone are protected. For example, yelling fire in a crowded theater is not considered protected speech under the First Amendment because doing so presents a clear and present danger to the public. Additionally, during a national security crisis, the government may try to restrict civil liberties in order to make the country safer, which can cause controversy if the public feels their rights are being restricted too drastically. Thus, it is the job of the government to ensure that both civil liberties and public safety are protected. In the United States, civil rights are protections that the government provides for citizens. Civil rights are meant to ensure that all Americans are equal before the law and do not face discrimination based on race, gender, or religion, among other things. In the U.S., most civil rights are protected through constitutional amendments, federal laws, and Supreme Court rulings. All of these measures are meant to prevent federal and state governments, as well as 
businesses from depriving individuals of their natural rights. While the framers recognized the importance of civil rights, the U.S. has not always protected the rights of all citizens. As a result, some groups have had to fight to have their civil rights acknowledged and protected. Civil rights in the U.S. comes from the concept of natural rights, an idea popularized during the Enlightenment by such political thinkers as Thomas Hobbes and John Locke. Natural rights are rights that all people are entitled to, as human beings, and this can't be taken away by another party, and that includes the government. For example, when the Declaration of Independence states that life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness are the rights of all men, it is referring to natural rights. Following the American Revolution, the framers wanted to ensure that the government could not threaten an individual's civil rights, as had been possible under the colonial rule of Great Britain. However, while the U.S. Constitution states that all men are created equal, and thus seemingly entitled to the same civil rights, the U.S. government initially only protected the civil rights of white male property owners. At the same time, slaves were granted no civil rights and women were prohibited from voting. As a result, these groups and others would have to fight to have their civil rights protected by the government. The expansion of civil rights has occurred throughout U.S. history, particularly during the Reconstruction era, following the Civil War, and the Civil Rights Movement of the 1960s. The right to vote is one of the most important civil rights that Americans have. In a democracy like the U.S., voting in elections give the public a say in who will represent them in government. Now, if a group is denied the right to vote, then they have no say in who represents them, and the government may not take their interests into consideration when drafting legislation. Additionally, if a group cannot vote, it will be difficult for them to address any legislation that discriminates against them, as was the case for African Americans who could not vote in the South during the Jim Crow era. Initially limited to white male property owners, voting is now a right of all U.S. citizens over the age of 18. Property requirements were the first restrictions removed, allowing all white men to vote. The 15th Amendment, which prohibits preventing someone from voting on the basis of race, gave non-white men the right to vote. However, in the South, poll taxes, literacy tests, violence, and other means were used to prevent African American men from exercising their constitutional right to vote. Women gained the right to vote in 1920, following the ratification of the 19th Amendment, though African American women still could not vote in the South. Voting rights would not be restored to African Americans until the passage of the Voting Rights Act in 1965, which gave the federal government the power to prevent states from enacting racially discriminatory voting laws. Because the U.S. Supreme Court interprets the Constitution, it's played a large role in determining American civil rights protections. Following the ratification of the 14th Amendment, which states that all individuals must have equal protection under the law, the court has been charged with determining when this principle is being violated by laws that could be discriminatory. In civil rights cases, the court uses a high level of scrutiny, which means that a racially discriminatory law will only be upheld if it serves a compelling state interest that cannot be met another way. Throughout U.S. history, the Supreme Court has both curtailed and expanded civil rights. For example, in Plessy v. Ferguson in 1896, the court ruled that segregation in the South was legal because while facilities for whites and African Americans were separate, they were, in the court's opinion, still equal. However, the court would reverse this decision in Brown v. Board of Education in 1954 ruling that segregation was unconstitutional because it violated the 14th Amendment. Other civil rights issues the court has addressed include Japanese internment during World War II, interracial marriage, citizenship, and voting rights. 
This video is very dense, so I have a few things for you to answer. First and foremost, how are civil rights and civil liberties similar? How can the judiciary balance individual rights with the common good? Why is due process important to a free society? Why are there ongoing struggles from civil rights, and can you give me an example? And lastly, do you agree or disagree with Ben Franklin's quote, those who would give up essential liberty to purchase a little temporary safety deserve neither liberty nor safety. Make sure to explain, and I really, really look forward to hearing from you.